Bro, this is unacceptable, dude. Look at this. I didn't even do a Python video. I did C++ and Java and I didn't even do a Python video. This is not okay. This is discrimination, but no more, okay? I will not tolerate any discrimination whatsoever against Python. Unless you're saying that it's slow, okay? Because it is slow as a turtle. No, a snail. Very, very slow, okay? But honestly speaking, Python is a super, super cool language because not only is it really, really easy to learn, it's also really versatile. It has like a ton of libraries. It has NumPy and Pandas for machine learning and data science. It has like a Pondlib for hacking. It ha you could, there's a ton of stuff in Python. You could go crazy. My favorite library in Python, gotta be Beautiful Soup, is for web scraping. The name is so good, Beautiful Soup. Who knew that soup was beautiful? Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today I wanted to do a Python crash course with all the stuff you gotta know for doing use to go in Python. So I'm not gonna go into all the ins and outs of Python because that would take forever and it's not really necessary for use to go. I'm only gonna talk about the bare minimum things you gotta know in order to do use to go problems in Python. So I'm just gonna use REPL because it's really easy to see my terminal, my uh, code and everything. So we're gonna use REPL. So the first thing you gotta know about Python is how it runs the code. So basically, it literally just runs top to bottom. It doesn't do any of the pre-compiling like C++ or Java does. It just runs from top to bottom. So for example, if I say x equals 1, and then I say x equals x minus 1, and then I do y equals 2, and then I do print x plus y, basically what's going to happen is it's going to start from here, x is equal to 1, then it'll go down to the next line, say x minus 1 is 0, and then set that into x, so now x is equal to 0, then it's going to go to y, y is equal to 2, so x equals 0, y equals 2, x plus y is going to print out 2. So let us try that out. So basically whenever you're writing a Python program, you literally don't need any functions whatsoever. It just runs from top to bottom. Of course, functions can help you if you're doing recursion or something, but if you're writing like a use code problem, you don't need any like main function or something. So the next thing you got to know is how variables work. And there's basically only three things you got to know about. Basically there's numbers, lists, and strings. So the way you define a variable is you put the name of the variable you want, an equal sign, and then whatever you want it to be set to. So I could change this to whatever. I could make it a number, a really big number. The cool thing about Python is that the numbers could be as big as you want. I can make it this big. We'll run this whole thing. And we get this massive number. In Python, you don't really have to worry about types at all. So I could even make this a decimal and it doesn't really care. 1.33. Epic stuff. So basically, in order to set up a variable, you literally put whatever the heck you want here and then set it equal to it. So before we move on to the other types, let's talk about what you could do with numbers, right? So obviously you have like x equals 1 plus 2, or you could do like y is equal to x plus 5 something. So there's obviously plus, you could do like z is equal to y minus 5. And then if you want to do multiplication, just x equals y times z. Now the cool thing about Python is that its division is not integer division necessarily like other languages, right? If you do like 3 divided by 2 in C++, you get 1 because it rounds everything down. In Python, it actually treats it like a decimal. So if I did like like x is equal to 5 over 2 and we print out x and run it, then we have that x is equal to 2.5, okay, it didn't round down or anything. However, in Usico, generally speaking, this round down is always good because you're generally always dealing with integers, so if you want to round down, you just add another slash, so it's double slash, you get round down, very cool stuff, we get 2. Another cool thing about Python is that you can do exponentiation super super easily, okay? If you want to do like x is equal to like 2 to the power of 5, all you got to do is that. Easy 32. In C++ or Java, you would have to do like math.pow, like whatever, or like pow whatever. This time, you don't even have to call a function, it's just a built-in operation. Python also has a bunch of other useful options, right? You have x is equal to max of like 5 comma 7. And that'd be, you get 7. Min also works. We get 5, very cool. If we want to do absolute value, all you got to do is abs, and then you do minus 7, and you get positive 2, hopefully. Very cool stuff. Wait, let me just write out everything that I did so far. Okay, that's basically everything I use for numbers, okay? Right here. Now the next thing we gotta talk about are lists, okay? And lists are super hacking easy in Python. Like in C++ and Java, you gotta know what the heck arrays and array lists and vectors and queues and all that stuff. Everything is one data structure in Python. So if I want a list to be like one, two, three, and then we print out x, we basically have one, two, three, right? It's a list of three integers. Then if you wanna ask us the first thing in the list, we just do x zero. Give us one, very cool. If we want to do uh, the second thing on the list, x1, so on and so forth, right? And now we can start talking about the more complex operations on the list, right? So what you might want to do is you might want to add something to a list, right? All you got to do is x.10, 4. Well, then we want to delete something from the list. Then all you got to do is x.pop. So I'm going to put it in the print statement so you can see what it actually returns. So x up pop and then you can put in the thing you want. So let's put like 3. So the third index is 4, so after this, 4 should be deleted from our list. Let us print out the list after too. So you can see, right? 
basically x dot pop returns the thing that it took out. So 4 was the thing it took out, so it returns 4 over here and it prints it out. And then you can see that x is now just 1, 2, 3. Very cool stuff. Another cool thing is that pop by default takes out the last element, right? So if I just run this without putting anything in pop, you get the exact same thing. Now the reason why this is super cool is because you can do DFS and BFS and all that stuff in Usico, like stacks and queues using only lists, right? So this right here is like a normal array list or vector or whatever the heck you want. But this is basically acting like a stack, right? Because we're basically adding over here and then we're taking out from the end. So whatever we put in last is going to be taken out first. And if we wanted to do a queue, all we got to do is we could do like pop zero. So that means the guy who was first in line, which is one, is going to get uh, popped out and the rest is going to stay in line and then we could keep popping the first guy out. Other useful things to know about lists is print len of x. So that's going to give you the length of the array, right? Now let's say you wanted to turn this 3 into a 2. That sounds like a great idea. So all you got to do is do x1, right? There's the first index, right? And then we set it equal to 1. And we'll print out x after. And easy peasy lemon squeezy 3 has turned into a 1. Oh my god. Okay, one more thing you might want to know for used to go about this is that you might want to like initialize an entire array of length n to like, I don't know, uh, zeros, all zeros. So in order to do that, all you got to do is we could say x is equal to 0 times like 50. And then we'll print x, and we can take out all this stuff. Alright, we got 50 zeros. Very cool stuff. Now the last type of variable you gotta deal with when you're doing Python are strings. Because in Usico, right, you're gonna be reading in strings from a text file, right? Because, like, your text file is not necessarily just numbers. And then you wanna convert those to numbers once you read them in. So essentially, a string is defined with double quotes, so you have this stuff, right? And if you print that out, hurry, you got a la 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 la. Very cool. Now in Python, you generally read files in terms of their lines, right? So you might get something that's like this. So it gives you a bunch of numbers in the same line. So the way you would convert that into an array of numbers is you would do x dot split by that. So basically what this does is it makes a list of strings, but it splits out all the spaces. So if I print out x right now, x equals that, print it out. So you can see, right, like single quotes are the same as double quotes in Python, but you can see it split it up into a bunch of these strings. However, these are not numbers, okay, so we can't use them like numbers, but in Usico, we usually want to use them like numbers. So if we want to convert something to a number, a string to a number, we could basically take, let's say, the first element, which is a string that represents 1, and we want to convert it to 1. So we do int of that. And now you can see that it's converted it to a number 1, and now you can add numbers to it, so let's try adding 5, which should give us 6. Very cool. If we didn't have the int, right, if we left it as a string, it's basically saying it's trying to concatenate a string to an int, right? Like when you add a string and a string, it puts them together, right? But if you're trying to add a string and an int, it doesn't know what to do with that. So either we could convert this to an int so it adds it like it's doing normal addition, or we could convert this to a string. So it'll basically become one file. Okay, very cool stuff. Another cool thing about strings is that it's basically a list of characters, right? So it got a one character, it got a space character, it got a two character, a space character, a three character, a space character. So if we want to get like the second character, so if we print out like x to, uh, one, right? It should give us this second character, which is a space, so we shouldn't see anything. So see this random space character right there? It basically took it from the second thing from your string. Alright, so that's all you gotta know about types. So now the one more thing you might need to know for bronze level stuff is how to do for loops. Okay, so let's get rid of all this nonsense. So in Usico you often have like n is equal to like 10, let's say. So why not if we wanted to do a for loop that prints 1 through 10? Then all we gotta do is for i in range 10, or n we could say, print i. So you can see that it goes from 0 to 9 just like any other for loop. Technically, you, you can make this a list of your own, right? You can do 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and if you do that, it basically goes through each element in the list and prints it out. So this is kind of like a for each loop in C++ or something. Okay, then you can also do while loop. So you could do j is equal to 0, while j is less than 10, print j, and then we want a j plus equals 1. And we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Very cool. Note how it's like something and then colon, something then colon. It's always like that. And then there's also if else statements, right? You basically have if and then your condition, right? So in Python, booleans, which are true or false, you have to capitalize the truth. So we do if true, then we'll print was up. So it should print was up, right? If we make this false though, it doesn't print was up. This is so sad. Why would it not say was up to me, dude? Come on, come on. We could do like three is less than five, maybe. Was up. Very cool. Then we could go even fancier with an else statement and then we do print not up. And we can make this 5 is less than 5, which is not true. Unfortunately, that would be so epic. Not up. And then we could do elif. So that's basically your else if statement. And then we put another condition. 6 is less than 7. And then else print yo's up. Okay. And we get no's up because this one was satisfied. But if we make this 7 and we run it again, yaw's up. Epic. Okay, two more fancier data types that we got to talk about. We got sets, okay? So we have s is equal to 1, 2, 3. Now, what happens if we try to add 4 to the set? 
So let's print it over here and then let's print it after and then we'll do set add four and then print. So you can see it became four, but if you try to add in the three, you can see it didn't get added. So basically what sets do is it lets you keep only unique elements. Then maps, okay? Basically what dictionaries are good for, those are what maps are called in Python, are for mapping something that's not a number to something else. So for example, we could do like Joe one, Bob two. And then if you want to access what Joe's number is, we could do that and we'll print that out. And you can see we got one. And then if we try to do Bob, you get two very cool stuff. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is how to do list stuff, right? Because we basically went through all the basic stuff. This is probably gonna be enough for you to get through bronze, right? But what about sorting and that kind of stuff, sorting and searching? So essentially to do sorting, all you gotta do is let's make, say we make a list, L is equal to like five, three, four, two, one, or one, two, to be cool. We can literally just do L dot sort, print L, and right, one, two, three, four, five. If we want to reverse it, we could do reverse is equal to true. Sorry, reverse, okay. And then now, why do we want to do binary search on this list? So let's take out the reverse, and then in order to do binary search, all we got to do is import or from bisect import scum. So basically, the two binary search things we want to do is lower bound and upper bound, right? So basically, where the smallest place we could put in a three, or where the biggest place we could put in a three. So the smallest place we could put in a three is right in between two and three, right? If we put it before two, it would not be sorted. If we put it after three, that would not be the minimum place you could put it. So that should give you two. But if we do upper bound, the largest place you could put it, it should be right here. So if we want to do lower bound, what we do is we do bisect left and then the number we want, so three. And this should give us two, so let's see. Very cool stuff. But if we want to do upper bound, find the highest place we could put it, bisect right. Very cool stuff, we did it, let's go. All right, the last like algorithm thing you want to know when you're doing um, Python is how to do functions. So basically you do def, which tells Python that you're making a function, and then you put the name of the function, like bruh, and then you put in all the arguments you want. So you could do like x, y, z. And if I want to do like x plus y minus z, and you want to return that, then if you want to call it, all we got to do is we do bruh, one, two, three, and we do print that. So basically the first guy goes in here, the second guy goes in here, the third guy goes in here. It doesn't even matter what the heck the type is, anything will work. You don't have to like say int x or anything. And then it'll put it in here. So x is 1, y is 2, z is 3, this should give us 0. Okay, very cool stuff. That is basically all the algorithm stuff you got to know for Python. Now the last thing we got to talk about is file input output. Let's just go through that real quick. So let's make a new file, bestiesaccount.in, okay? And we'll say, hi, this is very cool. So what we'll do is we'll do f is equal to open, bestiesaccount.in. And then if we want to read it, all we got to do is print f.read. Very nice stuff. What happens if it was multiple lines and let's just put it in a normal file, like used to go input. So essentially we would get n by reading the first line. So we do f.read line, right? But that's going to be a string. Okay. So we got to convert that to a number so we can actually use it like an integer. So we do that. And then we want to read in the other five numbers, right? So all we got to do is we do list of nums is equal to f.read line. However, we want to split it by the spaces in it, right? Because it's separated by spaces, we don't want those. So we're going to split it up. However, we want to convert all of those to integers. So what we do is we do a for loop for i in range m, and we do list of nums i is equal to int of list of nums i. There's technically a nicer way to do it with map if you want to search that up, but <laughs> this is just the simplest way to do it. And then if we print out list of nums, we get one, two, three, four, five, just as we wanted, very cool stuff. So basically your two friends are f.readline and split. Now what happens if we want to write this to a file? So we want to write our list to a file. All we got to do is open Bessie's account out. However, by default, it checks if we could read it, okay? But we don't want to read it, we want to write it. So all we got to do is specify w. Then if we want to write to it, all we got to do is f.write hello. Let's try that, go over here. Oops, I forgot to close it. So. If you're writing to a file, you had to close it before it actually writes to it. So we do f.close and let's run it again. Very cool stuff. We did everything we needed for Yusko in like, I don't know how many minutes. We'll see how much it is after I edit it. Okay. All right. That's basically all I have for Python Yusko. That's literally all you got to know. So I know I went through this really fast, but the point is you can just look at the syntax and then apply it to your own problem. The thing about Yusko is that the actual coding is not the hard part. Okay. You just got to know what's available to you and then be able to search it up when you need it. The algorithms are the most tricky part, so I suggest you guys study those. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching again and see you guys next time.